In the blending game engine, using logic to make a game can be very messy at times and frustrating if you forget what she was doing with them. As your project grows, you'll start to become slightly lost in the overwhelming group of spider webs. Well, today I came up with three best logic practices to overcome that. Alright, so number one, reuse sensors and actuators. Why? It decreases the amount of logic you use. In my older projects, sometimes I found myself having the same sensor or the same property actuator. It just takes up more, more space in my logic editor, which is not good. I was allowing myself to create the same thing I already have in my logic some way. I was creating more unnecessary logic. So what I started to do is I started to like pin down certain actuators that I needed to reuse at times if I was in a certain state and I knew I already had that property actuator somewhere. I just pin it down and move it to where I needed to, to reuse it instead of just creating the same thing over and over again. Especially with sensors that have true pulse going on. If if you need something that that uses true pulse mode more than one thing, you should use the same sensor instead of creating more than one sensor that have the same true pulse mode. You can try to reuse that same one. Number two, naming. Why? Readability. It falls back on number one and helps out number one. And understanding what's going on in your project. I feel like this is one of the most bigger ones from personal experience. For example, like in my older projects that I took a break from, I found myself completely lost and understand what I did at the time just because I didn't name my my sensors and or actuators so I had to go through each logic brick to get back in the rhythm get back in the motivation I had when I first started my project but the naming might take more time it might not be fun however I learned that in the long run it helps out a lot even if at the time you don't feel like you need it it really does help out a lot and you should always make that a habit when when doing that. It, it makes everything more clean too. And the last one, number three, splitting up your logic into states. Why? Control, structure, and readability. Well, when splitting up your logic into states, it helps structure your character logic or your object actions you have. For example, let's say in state one, we have set it up to be state one to have something like character movement. We put that in state one. State two, something like the, the player jumping. We have all the logic to have the player to jump. State three, we can do character holding an object. And state four, we can have the character have the character to roll the ability to roll so we have four states that the character do we split we split all the states up like this but we can have control if we want to have them in gameplay or not if we want to turn one on or turn one off like if you want to have the character not holding an object while rolling you can turn off that state in gameplay you can you can allow yourself to have more control what happens and then it's more structure you know what state does what in your character so it's more readable you know so that's that's a good practice to split up everything you're trying to do with your character into states